All right, so it looks like our sample is now ready. This is the hand that was the initial put, and this is what it generated. Get a lava filled alien hand. I would say this looks pretty cool. Hey guys, welcome to this channel. So we've been hearing a lot about text to text, text to image, image to image, text to video, video to video, etc., etc. Now it's time to talk about uh, text to 3D or text to a more 3D generated world per se. So we're going to be looking at three things in this video. First, we're going to be looking at text to 3. Then we're going to be looking at video to video, which is more of a 3D render of something. And then we're going to be looking at image to sound. So these are the three major things we're going to be exploring in this video today. Uh, I'm going to walk you through what these are, how these work, um, effectively help you understand you know, how to get best out of these tools or just learn more about what's happening in the generative AI space. So the first tool we're going to be looking at is latent labs. And apparently this helps you generate text to a 3D rendered world, right? This tool allows you to do is choose the stable diffusion model you wanted to use. So there's version 1.5 and there's version 2.1. And you can put a text prompt and this can apparently generate like a 3D render of the world that you want to generate, right? So let's, let's look at this. I'm just going to use the uh, default prompt that I had here and let's see what it can generate. Okay, so this is the render and oh my God, this looks pretty cool. So apparently it went on to generate like a 360 degree view of the text prompt itself. Use the power of stable diffusion that enables you to generate anything and then puts it in the perspective of it being a 3D world. Oh my God, this looks so cool. All right, so I'm just going to quickly try a couple of prompts. Okay, let's try this. So I can envision this being used in video games, right? A lot of effort goes into not only generate these assets, but of generate or ideate how these worlds look like. And I can completely imagine that this tool is automating or at least helping you ideate a lot of these things, right? Let's try one more prompt. I'm also interested to see how this does on the human images. Okay, this is a little bit weird. I can see some buildings there. This looks like a lake. Again, this is not perfect, but this is very, very new right now, right? And it's able to do, the fact that it's able to do something like this is already shocking. My assumption is that it's generating an image in a specific size and then rendering it, uh, you know, in a way that it looks more 3D. Let's try one more prompt. So I think I've noticed that it focuses only on generating worlds. You can see that I put in the astronaut walking on the surface, but apparently it does not generate images of people, I guess. I think that's how the prompting in the back end might have set up. Let's try one more. This is more of a cartoon. Looks cartoonish. Looks like some medieval village with the lake around here. Again. I can, like if you make certain optimizations to this, I can completely envision it uh, being used in video games and even in movies, right? Let's try one more prompt. Okay, this time it was able to generate a car, right? primarily because I put in BMW. Cool. What are we going to do is now we're going to change this to 2.1 and see if there is any difference. So this time it generated like completely different thing right i don't see any bmw around here let's try to generate a few more it's not bad to be honest right it's like given the fact that it's just the very it's just in a very nascent stage it's still doing a decent amount of job decent job in order to generate these images so i wouldn't say it's too bad if i look at it from this standpoint i can see that there's an oval shape uh, at least it's trying to look more of an oval shape but i'm sure it's trying right so anyways i think this is about how uh, this model works latent labs you can feel free to kind of explore this and try it out on your own use cases see if it is able to kind of support you any any of the use cases that you currently are working on but that's it let's move on to pix to pix which is more of a video generation but I've also noticed that if you feed in a good image, right, it's also able to generate like a 3D, real cool 3D render of sorts. This is on Hugging Face and this is an open source model. Some really cool people are working on this and they've put in a couple of things, right? So if you look at these two, these are samples that they've put out and we'll try, start trying with these samples, right? So let's try with this. 
effectively that was the input in the model and now you play this you can see that there was a prompt saying that make it a marble sculpture sculpture and it was able to make this a more more like a marble now let's make it a lava filled alien hand let's see what it generates so while i wait for this uh, if you're new to this channel consider subscribing to the channel for the best content in ai generation uh, or generative ai space i talk about not only things that are new in generative ai but i also kind of go ahead and explore tools like these in order to ensure that you are up to date with everything that's happened in generative ai uh, so consider subscribing to the channel in order to stay updated with these trends so while it's generating our sample i'm also going to quickly talk about the second example that they have here it you can see it's a you know the video of where waves are coming in and they gave a prompt that says make it molten lava and this is what it happened this is what it does right so while this is not perfect it looks like it's just added kind of this texture of uh, lava you can see at the surface here it looks a little bit more like the lava itself this is not perfect but at least uh, there's some work going on specifically on this and i'm 100 percent sure just like text to image was nascent back then it will evolve over time and you know improve to a point where this can generate like really really cool stuff there's another video on gen 1 where they showcase their video to video capabilities there's currently a waitlist going on there i think that's pretty super cool too right so i i would encourage you to kind of check that out as well all right so it looks like our sample is now ready and it looks super cool right so you can see that this is the hand that was the initial uh, input and this is what it generated so our prompt again was make it a lava filled alien hand and i would say this looks pretty cool i don't know what you think but it looks pretty pretty cool it's obviously not perfect but at least it's in the direction and like if you in, if we invest like a few months you look at this again in the six months down the line period i'm 100 percent sure this is going to improve over time it's super super cool all right so here's another one where again i don't think this is as good but make it a transparent glass hand is what i had entered and let's see the result i don't think it's done too much uh, and I can completely understand given the model itself is in the training period and it's not there yet. But at least I think it brightened the hand a bit if, if nothing else. Okay. So let's also look at how the other sample did, right? So I said make it flowers in the input and this is the output. Um, well, to be honest, what it looks like it did is that it kind of added the colors of the flowers. What I was expecting is the flowers floating instead of the water floating, but at least I think from the standpoint of how early all of these models are, I think it's in the direction, right? So it's kind of a garden per se, right? So these are all grasses and these are all colors on the garden again. And I think this is all I'm going to be exploring for this pix to pix Now let's move on to image to sound, how the models will generate sound based on understanding what the image is fed to the model itself. So let's move there now. All right, so the last tool we're going to be exploring today is the image to sound tool. Now this can convert the image and then give you a sound that would describe the image per se, right? So it says convert an image to a corresponding sound effect generated through Cocoa image captioning and audio LDM, right? So effectively you generate the image, and uh, you know, you add the image and then it will automatically generate. You can also put in prompt to make it more uh, focused but let's just try an image that I had generated using AI back then. Let me find it. Okay. So I'm going to upload this image and see what kind of sound this generates, right? A woman wearing a golden headpiece. So you can see it automatically kind of created a description off of this. And then let's generate SFX from image. It'll take some time. Just going to wait it out while this is processed. Okay, so it looks like the sound for this image is ready. It looks like a more, looks, looks, you know, like some entrance of sort or, you know, a royal kind of a sound. Let's say royal entry of a queen. 
let's try this. Okay, so I put in the prompt royal entry of a queen and again this is <laughs> like I said this is not perfect but it looks like there is some crowd that's making the noise once the queen is kind of entering but again what it effectively does it looks at the image am I understanding it kind of identifies the tags uh, from the image and then generates sound based on those tags super cool again let's try the other sample here where i put in this image and looks like a more cyberpunkish image and then let's see what kind of sound it has generated i think from this image standpoint uh it, if it's not say perfect but it's still kind of related uh, with respect to how the image looks like because it's neonish a bit so it looks like a more futuristic city where uh, this person is more of a robotish and the music itself seems like a more futuristic and a more robotish sounding sound per se all right and i think that's pretty much going to be it for the video again all of these you know tools are pretty nascent right i like latent labs the most i think it has the potential of changing how the gaming or you know how the landscapes are created in the uh, games at least and other models too again these are all in the nascent stage some points some point this will be become a bit more mature uh, you can also check out gen 1 by runway i think they are generating some really really cool and you know outputs depend depending on what video is fed to the model itself but i think that's going to be it for the video if you like this video consider subscribing to the channel drop a like on this video share this across with a friend and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you so much